Well then, children. It's time to discuss Phylum Arthropoda, the most successful animal phylum. You thought and wanted it to be Chordata, but it is not. It is these things. They were on the planet before Chordates, and they will be on the planet after the extinction of Chordates. That's uh, just how it is. So, the cladogram. We're going to zoom in right down here with the arthropods. Now notice the arthropods, like the mollusks, have a body cavity. They're coelomates, but these mollusks were more similar to our nematodes. Annelids have the branch for arthropods. What's similar with the arthropods from the annelid worms is that both of them have body segments. Very crucial. However, unlike the annelids that had a crap ton of segments, they've really reduced the number of segments to increase the complexity and specialization of each segment. So make sure, as per usual, you've got this down here, the fuzzy one in the bottom, that's core data. I wouldn't be surprised if there was a quiz, maybe Friday, where maybe you have to uh, arrange the nine phyla appropriately on a cladogram. It's going to be a quiz on Friday, you have to do that. So, let's discuss my earlier claim, though, uh, that they are the most successful. And I think I actually have to back it up a little bit, so... Ah, sweet, sweet zooming out. Phylum arthropoda is over 500 million years old. It's one of the first ever animals found on the land. In fact, there's actually over a billion, billion different insects alive right now. A bill, you know, like you've heard like a hundred thousand or like, you know, 700 million. A billion billion is a billion billions. Just, just, just look at all the zeros and just be odd, okay? This is how many different insects are alive. We're talking like number of individuals, not number of species, but number of individuals. That's just one subphylum, all right? used to be called class insecta, now they, it's so large they consider it a subphylum. Subphylum insecta just has that, that number. I mean, they, they still got crustaceans and, and trilobites and a bunch of others too. So, I mean, they're, they're, they're crazy. The most successful group on land is insects. The most successful group in the ocean are our friends, the copepod. Here is a picture of one. It's a, it's a water flea. It's, it's adorable. It's got like little legs and they use their antenna to swim. So it's like they got, they stick out the antenna and it's like burp, 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 burp. Keystone species in most environments because they are a fundamental primary consumer, right? These are the things that eat the producers. Without them, uh, it'd be bad. Majority of the biomass, that's not, they, these fall into that group of that zooplankton. The zooplankton. So the majority of the biomass of the ocean, those guys as far as animals go. In addition to that, their total mass for the copepods is more than the mass of all the different types of whales combined. And, you know, in case it wasn't clear about like how many of them there are. No, they don't weigh that much. They're not like some kind of weird neutrino, super dense like craziness. But instead, there's just that many of them. That's an important, important thing. Uh, this, by the way, is on 250 times magnification, just to give you an idea. They're, they're, they're little. They're adorable. All right, so let's look here. We've got our common ancestor. Here's Phylum arthropoda. We focus mostly on the crustaceans and the insects, on crustacea and insecta. But there's also chelicillariates, that's where all your arachnids end up. Eww. Trilobites, the state fossil of Ohio, for more on them. Talk to Miss Prinky, because they're her favorite. And then there's myropods, which are like gross, nasty, many, ugh, grossness. All right, all members of Phylum Arthropoda have three main features in common. They have a tough, rugged exoskeleton. That's right, exoskeleton. Not an endoskeleton. It's not on the inside. It's on the outside of the bodies this time. They also have jointed appendages. I mean, that's arthropod. This is what they're named for. They invented having joints, invented having a skeleton. When you have a skeleton, that's great. It gives you a lot more, you know, strength, support, protection. But without joints, 
you can't really uh, activate any kind of range of motion. So those joints are really important. They have a variety of different appendages. And really in the dissections, this is what it's all about, the, the, the appendages. That's what you're looking for, the appendages. Here's an example of a miropod. Just look at it. Tough exoskeleton. Blah, and then all these jointed appendages. Even the antennae get joints sometimes. Gross, but true. In addition to that, the third feature is segmentation. You can see here that this one is more similar to our annelid worms, where they've got many much moosen of body segments. But body segmentation is the third feature that all arthropods have in common. Exoskeleton, jointed appendages, body segmentation. These are the major features that define this phylum. Let's talk about those joints, since I made such a big huff out of them. Uh, they have many different kinds of joints, and they can have them specified for a variety of different situations. For example, the crayfish that we're going to dissect tomorrow, up here on the head has antenna and antennules. Those are sensory organs. Uh, extended touch, they know what's around them. Some of them even have chemoreceptors in there for picking up different chemicals. The chelipeds, not so much for, you know, getting prey. These are more for defense against other... These over here, these are for feeding, these mouth parts, this, uh, they've got this, all this, like, Dr. Zoiberg, like, hello. They have walking legs, they also have swimming legs, or sorry, walking appendages, swimming appendages, even the tail here is a jointed appendage. They're just, ooh, highly adapted is, is basically where we're going with this. They have, Highly adapted jointed appendages, specialized, form follows function. These have been modified by evolution like crazy. They reproduce fast, they put out as many offspring as possible and as many generations as possible. And so they've really, they're highly modified. They've got a vast variety of traits and most of them are involved in the appendages performing specific purposes. In addition to that, we also have, my friend and yours, the exoskeleton. The exoskeleton isn't like ours. Our bones are, are like support and strength. They're fortified with calcium. So, like the calcium carbonate shell on the mollusks, they're kind of, they're, they're brittle, right? They, they're rigid. You hit them with a hammer, they're going to break. Whereas the exoskeleton is, is, is somewhat flexible. So it's like rugged and tough. Think like, like a Kevlar vest. That's what this is, a tactical vest, right? Uh, no, no, arthropods are not bulletproof, okay, they're just, it's, it's more similar if there's some flexibility to it. And that's because it's made out of this structure called chitin, this chemical called chitin, which is also found in the cell wall of fungi, keep that in mind. This is a, a picture of chitin, here is showing you a little arthropod action. The weird things with arthropods is uh, the, their, their exoskeleton, unlike our endoskeleton that grows with us, results in growing pains usually when, when your bones are elongating and stretching out, it stretches your muscles, stretches your tendons. The uh, arthropods have the opposite kind of discomfort. They're growing, their muscles are getting bigger, their bodies are getting bigger, and they just, they get so cramped in the exoskeleton because the exoskeleton does not grow with them. So they have to molt like a snake. You have to molt, break out of their exoskeleton, they leave it behind. You'll see these on trees like cicadas. Blah. They'll come out and now, now it's naky. Now it's vulnerable. But it's going to secrete a new chitinous exoskeleton soon. I can't stress how strong and rugged this stuff is. If it gives you any idea, chitin is now being used in most surgical fiber because that's how strong the material is. We're talking like spider webbing, like Spider-Man powers in the chitin. Very, very incredible material. And arthropods have the corner of the market of making it their skeleton. To one of the reasons why some of them are harder to crush than others, and some of them, like, like a tick, it's almost like it's armor. They're like invincible. The best part, though, about having a skeleton is you end up having what we call skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscle, this is the same muscle that we have, the same type of muscle is also found in arthropods, all right? It's called striated muscle because you can see inside there, right, this, these aligned striations, these strands, that makes it super strong 
And that is what is capable of allowing them to do like really, really amazing things. Like Spider-Man, he lifts heavy objects because he's got spider strength. But spiders have that strength because of the striated muscle and the leverage provided by the fact that they're attaching it to exterior skeletons. It's, it's all levers. It's all levers. But because striated muscle is so much stronger than the smooth muscle from mollusks and worms, that's why arthropods and chordates are so much more powerful. If you have any questions, make sure you include them because you need two because it's a whisk. Dissection slides coming in. Oh, wait, wait, dissection slides coming next.